Okay, so we are going to be talking about the Adams Family. Um, I'm going to give you a little information about it and then I have about the original creator uh, and how everyone got their names. Um, and it's mainly going to be surrounding the 1964 TV series. So I have my little black dress on, I've got my red nails, and I'm going to do Morticia-esque makeup. Obviously it's not going to be perfect like Morticia, um, and I do not have a wig. But I do have my black dress on, I got my black, my black, my bat necklace and my bat earrings. And I also have this cute little, whoop, this cute little ring that I'm going to have on my finger as her wedding band. So, yeah, let's uh, make me into an Adams. So, let's go.
All right, I do know that one of my wings is a little bit longer than the other, but I'm not gonna touch it because this is the smallest they have ever been. They look really cute. I really like them. I'm really happy with this. Um, oh yeah, I forgot about this ring. This ring is just a little fake opal. And I know Morticia also has like, this huge big ass ring uh, that she usually wears on her right hand. And I don't have anything that big other than this so she has an opal uh but yeah i have powder in my nose and i get a sneeze and it went away bitch oh i still have hot coffee yes bitch okay okay so let's talk about the makeup i know i did not use um i did put on mascara i put it on after so i used the uh Pat McGrath Labs Fetish Eyes Mascara, and then I gelled down my eyebrows with my e.l.f. Um, clear Brow and Lash Mascara. But, got highlight on, I was going to like contour my cheeks so they're like, more sunken in, um, but I don't want to focus that anymore than I want to. And it's taken me three days to get all my notes together for this video. So we're going to bang this out. Um, and then I'm going to film probably a crocheting video. So we are going to start with the auto family. But look at this. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Okay. <sighs> I'm sorry. Uh, the Adams Family was created by Charles Adams uh, in 1938. Uh, Charles Samuel Adams was born January 7th, 1912 in Westfield, New Jersey. Um, he passed at the age of 76 due to a heart attack. Uh, September 29th, 1988 in Manhattan. He was an American artist and cartoonist best known for the Adams Family. Originally, the Adams Family did not have any names. So, uh, I, I, they didn't have any names until the 1964 TV, TV series, um, starring Caroline, Carolyn, Carolyn Jones, uh, as Morticia, who has passed, and, uh, John, I want to say Austin, I think, um, the man who plays Samwise from The Lord of the Rings is his adopted father is his adopted son, I mean, sorry, because <laughs> John, uh, yeah, he is 90, 91 years old, he still looks the same, I mean, he looks, uh, you would expect a 97 year old man to look, um, but I think he still looks, he looks good for his age, and he played Gomez, um, the cartoon panel ran in The New Yorker from 1938 to 1988, when uh, the creator passed. Um, the panel featured two parents, Gomez and Morticia, their children, Wednesday and Pugsley, uh, extended family, Uncle Fester and Grandmama, their butler, Lurch, and Pugsley's pet octopus, Aristotle. Um, the hardly seen thing, you know, thing, <laughs> um, thing, T thing is thing's full name. Um, wasn't actually supposed to be a disembodied hand that we all know today, and we mainly know that because the, um, the 1991 and 93 films. So, Thing was introduced in 1954 and was conceived as a whole creature, too horrible to be seen in person, uh, but was always, like, watching the family while they were doing something. Um, it wasn't until 1991 and 1993 films, uh, that they actually made him a dis made thing a disembodied hand um cousin it and kitty cat were also introduced in uh 1954 now kitty cat was their uh it was morticia's cat it was a giant ass male lion <laughs> okay um talk about the 1960s tv show like I said, the 1960 and uh, 1964 TV series, uh, the characters had no names before then. Gomez was actually supposed to be either named, uh, was either Gomez or Rapelli. 
I think. R E P E L L I, Repelli. Uh, the final decision was actually made by John Austin himself.、Um, and he had originally auditioned for the role of Lurch, who was their big butler, who looked like Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> I personally love Lurch, I always have all interpretations of him. <laughs> Um, Ted Cassidy played both Lurch as well as Thing, and actually, he got paid for both parts. <laughs> um, the Adams Family House, because the, the TV series itself was shot in black and white. Now, actual like, black backgrounds and everything didn't really show up that great,、um, especially before they went to color, before TVs went to color. So, they painted the entire house.、Um, Pink and、uh, pink and red were the only ones that really showed up really well, and it offered a lot more de- depth. So,、um, yeah, the in- interior of the house was、uh, pink and red, as well as other subtle colors like、um, probably greens and a little bit of browns, a little bit of blacks, and everything.、Um, the interior came courtesy of Debbie Reynolds. Now, I know her as playing the, I believe she was the grand, yeah, she was the grandmother on、um, Halloween Town. Most other people know her as Carrie Fisher, who played Princess Leia in the original Star Wars films. That's her mom. And I still cannot wrap my head around the fact that Carrie Fisher passed before her mom did. Can you imagine the pain that Debbie was going through?、Um, But she had actually donated、um, sets from her film,、uh, The Unsinkable Molly Brown, which hit theaters a few months before The Addams Family premiered.、Uh, the Addams Family was the first TV family to ever have a home computer. And it was a fucking giant switchboard. <laughs>、um, Carolyn Jones, who played Morticia, split from her second husband shortly before the show premiered. Austin Suits. Oh my god, okay. So, John Austin actually had,、uh, had, yeah, he liked smoking cigars at the time. So, playing Gomez and smoking a cigar wasn't anything new to him. However, Gomez has a habit in the series, you, if you go and see it, you can find it on YouTube,、um, of putting lit cigars out in his pockets. So, to make sure that you know, he wouldn't burn himself while he was acting or、um, the costumes wouldn't get set on fire, they lined the suit pockets with asbestos. I do not know how the man has made it to 90, but、uh, they would line the pockets with asbestos so they would go out and he wouldn't catch himself on fire. Because if you don't know what asbestos is, it's a heat resistant mineral、uh, that can be woven into a fabric and used、uh, in fire resistant and insulating materials such as brake lining. Jesus Christ.、Um, The studio would not pay for singers、uh, to do the theme song.、Um, the song itself was just multiple takes、uh, from Vic Mizzy,、uh, who also wrote the theme song for、uh, Green Acres. So, whenever we hear all that, I don't want to get copyright struck. Or I'd have it in the background, trust me. It, it, it's killing me to not have it, have it play. You can't talk about the Addams Family without having that in the background. Okay.、Uh, the Addamses made their first animated appearance in Scooby Doo in 1972、uh, in Wednesday Missing. So、uh, the Scooby Doo series went from、um, the TV, se- the regular series,、um, Scooby Doo Where Are You, from 69. Uh, by Hanna Barbera,、uh, it went into a new season or a new series, which was the new Scooby Doo movies. So there's actually,、um, I think, yeah, I think、um, John Austin and Carolyn Jones actually got to voice, I, I think everyone actually got to voice their own char- their original characters in that. Uh, in that movie. I'm gonna find it after this and watch it, and、uh, hopefully, I'll remember to put it in the description or in the pinned comment or here. <laughs>、um, really quick, notable actresses who played Morticia. I know I don't look like Morticia. I love her so much, but I am not going to do the Angelica Houston one where it's very in the long ass wig. 
I might dye my hair, but I am not going to wear a wig. I'm too uncomfortable about that. But uh, the original, the goddess herself, rest in peace, uh, Carolyn Jones, played uh, Morticia Adams in the 1964 TV original. Then we know Angel Houston from the 1991 movie, as well as the 93 sequel. Uh, then it was Daryl Hannah in Adam's Family Reunion, which I have not seen, but that came out the year I was born, so 1998. Um, Evie Harvey uh, played her in the 1998-2001, the new Adam's Family series, and then Charlize Theron from uh, the 2019 movie, which we actually, before somebody says that uh, Morticia cannot have short hair, young Morticia had short hair. Do not fight me on that. <laughs> Especially, like, when you think about the Addams Family, one thing that they are is they're creepy, they're kooky, mysterious, and spooky, but they're also not supposed to be your average family. Especially back in the 1960s, portrayed on TV, not a lot of the couples were seen being that close. In fact, the reason we see, uh, especially older TV shows, like in the 1960s and, uh, yeah, 1960s and all that, um, the reason the beds in the bedroom of, of a married couple were separate was because they didn't want people to think that married couples were having sexual relations. That's the person you're supposed to be doing it with. I don't- I- mm, I hate purity culture. <laughs> but, especially something traditional, was that the girls would wear certain kinds of outfits. So I think Morticia's dress would change with the times. That's why I have on my little black dress uh, that actually flares a little bit at the bottom. Um, and at one point in time, short hair was very popular, so I assume Morticia would have very long hair, unless Gomez did, of course, ask her, because he always asks his wife's permission not to change her appearance. He loved her little black dress, so she never wore another. Um, okay going back to more facts. Morticia's mother was actually played by Margaret Hamilton. Now, if you don't know who Margaret Hamilton is, she played the, with the Wicked Witch of the West in the, uh, ver uh, the, the Wizard of Oz. Um, yeah, in the original Wizard of Oz. She played uh, Hester Frump, and you see her in the second season. Um, Lurch was originally going to be mute, but Ted Cassidy came on to set and did the uh, the line we all know and love, You reign. <laughs> and it stuck like that. Why is it so... Hold on. It's not going to work right. There we go. Jackie Coogan, Coogan I want to say? I'm, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering their names. Um, also known as Uncle Fester, uh, has a law named after him. He was a child actor who played the title role in Charlie Chaplin's uh, The Kid. The Kid, excuse me. His parents mishandled uh, his earnings, which left him penniless by the time he was 21. So... Uh, the law requires 15% of um, all minors' earnings to be put into a trust fund, aka a Coogan account. Um, Cousin it, it wasn't in the original Adam's Family panels until uh, David Levy, um, producer De David Levy of the TV series, uh, suggested suggested it. Um, I think he just wanted like. Gomez to have more of a tie with family uh, because we didn't really see a lot of Gomez aside of the family, technically. Um, the actors didn't get paid for the reruns. They got paid for five reruns of the first five episodes. They did not get paid for any of the rerun reruns. So all the reruns that I have seen uh, since my <laughs> birth, fucking uh, John Austin has not been paid for them. And that makes me fucking mad. <laughs> That makes me mad. It's it's probably a little bit different now. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like especially, like, I watch a lot of me- not a lot, but I watch me TV, and especially early in the mornings, it plays, like, uh, the Patty Duke show and Mr. Ed and, uh, TV shows that my 
my nan grew up watching and well technically not my nan because she was like 18 by that time i think um my parents grew up watching like i watched the original scooby-doo that my dad grew up watching which was in the 70s um the adams made or not the adams Adams himself, the creator, uh, made $141,276 with for the Adams Family series and the Adams Family um, panels. With inflation, that's one million seventy-three thousand seventy-four dollars due to episode payments, reruns, and revivals. Would have been more if not, <laughs> if not for his second wife wanting to have ten percent of the ten uh, percent of the proceeds as part of their divorce settlement. <laughs> the house was real. The house was real. Oh my god! I looked at pictures of it. The house was gorgeous, and I'm mad. It is no longer standing. I am so pissed. It was. <laughs> 21 Chester Place in LA. Un uh, special effects added the third floor tower. Yeah, the third floor tower. Unfortunately, the place was demolished between 68 and 72. The show was canceled after only two seasons because at the same time, uh, the Munsters came out in 64. Now, the Munsters, I will get into probably in another video, but the Munsters is also one of my favorite ones. I've always loved it. So I'll tell you about the parents and the family real quick. So we have Frankenstein's monster, who is uh, Herman Munster. Then we have his wife, who is the daughter of Dracula. It wasn't really originally going to be... Um, you know what? I'll get into that in the monster video. Oh, I'm sorry. Then they have a son who is a werewolf. They have a niece who is a normal girl. And then they have grandpa who is Dracula. Uh, and they have a dragon living under the stairs. I love these shows. Don't, don't, don't pick on me. Uh, they were discontinued because, I mean, first of all, it was the 60s. Secondly, um, the public got burned out of monster sitcoms. The general public did. Weirdos like me absolutely adore these films. My boyfriend has not seen these and he wants to do reaction videos. I said, honey, when we go and do TV series, this is the first one you're watching. I guarantee it. Wednesday Adams' name is actually inspired by a uh, old nursery rhyme. Charles Adams himself did not come up with it. And you know her middle name is Wednesday. Er, her middle name is Friday. Wednesday Friday Adams. Um, it was a famous nursery rhyme called Monday's Child. The rhyme assigned characters to each day, uh, each day of the week. Wednesday's child was full of woe. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit, uh, I'm going to bounce between Carolyn Jones and uh, Angelica Houston because those are the two prevalent, um, aside from Charlize Theron, I'm probably saying her last name wrong, Charlize Theron, Charlize Theron, uh, aside from her wonderful, wonderful uh, voice acting for Morticia, I actually really like it. I think it's nice that they added a lot of like little details from all the movies and all the series. Um, I do think it's kind of odd that there's a, that Wednesday now has a octopus and it's Socrates instead of Aristotle. But as long as they're still weird, we all love the Adams family. If you don't, get off my page. I don't. Mm -mm. We don't do that kind of negativ negativity here. See yourself out. Okay. Angelica Houston's 1991 portrayal of Morticia had to be the most annoying and the most uncomfortable. First of all, she had a metal corset on to keep that exaggerated tiny ass waist, which, technically speaking, I honestly don't think that she really needed. I think there, there definitely could have been some adjustments. And I find it annoying. 
and disrespectful that she was actually having to do that. Um, and the reason I'm focusing on Morticia so much is just because I kind of wanted to dress up a little bit like her. And I know I'm not Morticia. I want to be, though. Uh, she had elastic straps attached to the back of her head via fabric. Um... Her eyes were supposed to be slanted. I'm not trying to do anything, but just like, it's supposed to be a lift. So like, imagine my hands not here. They were just supposed to give her like an eye lift. Um, and they were extremely uncomfortable. And there was another one like around her neck because for whatever reason, they decided to make Morticia so dispro not disproportionately, because Angelica Houston is amazing. They just chose to make her look more like the cartoon, uh, which came out much, much late, uh, much earlier, um, after this TV series, but before the 91 movie, which is actually really good. You need to go look at it. Uh, there's one from the six, 60s or 70s, and then there's one in the early 90s, I think. Um, before the show itself came out. Or the movies, the 91 movies that we know. Um, I actually think they were on Boomerang. Because I remember seeing a couple of them on Boomerang. Um, yeah, those around her eyes gave her such awful headaches. And every single time she would turn, she would have to make sure she turned, if you watch the movies, she has to turn her entire body before she steps anywhere. Because if she just turned her head to go and do something, those straps would break. And then she would have to get more, uh, or uh, sit there for a long period of time to put them back on and fix everything. It, mm. Like I said, she had an uncomfortable metal corset They uh, and the long, fake nails. Okay. Any person who has had on fake nails, long, fake nails, knows that, first of all, if you don't do those right, even if they're just like the little, the little glue ones that I have, the press-ons, those can get painful, especially for a long period of time. Imagine, because she had to sit in the makeup chair um, for three hours. Carolyn Jones had to sit in it for two. Neither one of those women needed to sit there for that long in order to get a, a perfect Morticia. Let me just tell you that right now. Neither one of those women needed to do that. I need a quick drink. I'm sorry, I'm getting heated. It makes me mad because female actors and actresses or those being portrayed as women have to sit through this grueling ass process. Obviously, special effects makeup, understandably so, it is a lot worse. However, the female beauty standard is so misjudged and so fucking stupid. The males is the same, but I'm ranting about the women's right now. It's so stupid, it's painful. But yeah, especially when those nails are not done correctly, they will hurt. But why do you women do it? First of all, some of us don't have a choice. Some of us have to do it for work. Like Angelica Houston at the time. I don't think there was a way that she was able to talk the producers, the costume designers, and the directors out of it. If there was, don't you think she probably would have done it? I hate when they undermine people like that. Well, if you were that uncomfortable, why didn't you just say something? Maybe they did. Maybe it just wasn't able to work in their favor. There was also, I'm not sure how true this is, Speaking of Carolyn Jones real quick, people thought or believed, or maybe it actually did happen, that she and uh, John Austin actually had a thing for each other. That's why it made the on-screen or on-set romance for the two characters so much easier because they actually liked each other. And I kind of think about it sometimes because... Matthew Perry, from uh, who played Chandler on Friends, and Courtney Cox, who played Monica. Matthew really does and or did really love Courtney. So when it came to them being coupley, or when they finally got together, 
it came so naturally to them. It, it was insane. So I think it helps. Uh, but John Austin also delivered the eulogy at Carolyn's um, funeral. So. Happy note. <laughs> In 2007, I remember this. Because 2007... Hold on. <laughs> okay, so this came out when I was nine. Um, a TV commercial for M&M's introduced their dark chocolate M&M's to... A, it was parodied for the 1964 Addams Family intro. Google it or I will leave it in the description if I'm allowed to. I thought it was a fever dream. God, I feel old. <laughs> but that popped up. I watched it and it was just like, oh, I remember that. <laughs> the good thing is with the Adams family, I don't think they're ever going to go out of style. I honestly don't. And I am perfectly content with that. That does not upset me at all. I want my kids to watch it. Um. In the TV show, Uncle Fester is supposed to be Martish's uncle. Um, while in the films, he's actually Gomez's brother. And the same with Grandmama. In the TV series, uh, they were supposed to be... Uh, Grandmama was supposed to be... Grandma... Uh, Mother Adams? So, was Gomez's mom? Uh, and then in the movies, she was uh, Martish's mom. So she was actually Grandma from because that's Morticia's maiden name, from. Um, and she was perceived as a witch. As if we didn't know. <laughs> Looking at her, any of her actresses, who, by the way, in the 2019 one with uh, Charlize Theron, the voice of Grandmama, who is Gomez's mother, is the one and only iconic Bette Midler. Now, if you do not know who that is, educate yourself. Educate yourself hard. Because, bitch, we got a Hocus Pocus 2 coming. And I am so excited. I am hoping it's not going to let me down. I'm going to be extremely disappointed. But, I love that mother. Oh my god. Winifred Sanderson is peak. Peak. Let me introduce you to the family animals real quick. Uh, so they have their lion, kitty cat, who's actually kind of a sissy. Not a sissy. I shouldn't say that. Sorry. Kitty cat is, um, a scaredy cat. A cowardly lion. Pugsley's octopus, Aristotle. Wednesday's black widow, Homer, as well as her... Anol? A-N-O-L-E? Lucifer. It's a lizard. Gomez wears a wristwatch, has a pocket watch, and there's also their wolverine cuckoo clock uh, in their home that growls at them every hour. But he wears a wristwatch that says uh, one is the wrong time, and then he has a pocket watch that's a little bit ahead. So to figure out what time it is, he kind of just picks somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I love Gomez as a character. Um. To create Cousin It's a Voice, they actually uh, had a producer speak nonsense into a tape recorder and then played it back. Played it back at high speed. Ted Cassidy, who played both Lurch and Thing, uh, would switch hands. So one time it would be his right hand, one time it would be his left. Um, just to see if anyone would notice. At first, Jackie Coonan, uh, Kogan, Coonan. Kogan, Coogan, I'm so sorry, uh, the actor who played Uncle Faster uh, was actually turned down for the role, uh, but he was determined to get it, so he shaved his head, created his own costume, and did his own makeup, and auditioned again, and the producers were so, like, they loved his energy and everything so much, they were like, uh, his dedication, so they were just like, you know what, okay, you got it. <laughs> um, when the show aired, editor of the New York 
Times magazine uh, that the panels were originally in, um, an editor named William Shaw uh, refused to print any panels, believing it would cheapen uh, the magazine because the Adams Family TV series was so common. He fucking hates stuck up people. Uh, in 1987, when he retired, the panels went back on, or went back in. Austin gave Gomez that slightly manic look because he worked. <laughs> uh, during his early career, he lived in uh, a bad part of New York City, so or in the rough area of New York. So he learned that if he acted insane, people would leave him be. Carolyn Jones and Angelica Houston used to spend hours in makeup chair. Uh, Jones took two hours. Houston took three. Uh, it wasn't unusual to have the actors in the makeup chair at 4 a.m. Oh my god. Like, I, I kind of understand Angelica's because it's a lot... Well, uh, I, I can see Carolyn's as well. Because her dress was so tight and so small, uh, and the skirt, you had to, like, if you don't know anything about corsets, especially corsets, or anything where it, like, restricts your bending, because Morticia couldn't really bend that well, um, if you have to wear any sort of corset or under boning, you have to put your shoes and everything on first, and Morticia's skirt is supposed to be styled like a hobble skirt, for obvious reasons, um, because women would just hobble obviously was not that popular and did not last very long. I kind of like how they have it now where it's still a tight dress but it's more like a mermaid or a trumpet style dress which I think is absolutely fire. Oh, I love it. He's so pretty. Okay, I have two more facts for you guys and then we are done. I will say goodnight and I will go do something else. Actually, I'm gonna film some Morticia TikToks. Uh, the relationship between Gomez and Morticia was groundbreaking. They they were the first couple portrayed to be madly in love with each other, as far as I'm aware, because I think other TV shows like I Love Lucy, The Mary Tyler Moore Show, The Dick Van Dyke Show, The Patty Duke Show, any show that shows like um, married couples, married couples would sleep in separate beds, they would, the father wasn't very attentive towards the child except when it came to a son, the mother dealt with the, um, the daughters a lot more. Gomez and Morticia were the ideal partners for each other. They were madly in love with each other. Um, they were the best parents and they were the best team and they still are. And they are impeccable parental standards. Um, they did have their married sex life implied. Charles Adams, <laughs> okay. Last fact, and this is about the creator was known for having somewhat uh, macabre, so really, really dark, um, hold on, let me look at the actual definition for this so I can make sure I give you guys the right information. I had it pulled up and I deleted it. used to describe things, the horror of death or violence, if a story involves a lot of blood and gore. Yeah. Okay, so very gruesome-esque interests. Uh, his house was apparently filled with torture instruments uh, and medieval weaponry. In fact, he was very fond of crossbows and often fantasized about shooting a burglar with one. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of people. <laughs> but that is all I have for you guys in this video. I do understand I was laughing and smiling and joking around a lot more than probably Morticia would, especially our version of Morticia, but I know Carolyn Jones' version, while still being very ladylike and very put together, would still allow herself a little chuckle, a little laugh, and a smile. <laughs> so... Yeah, let me know who your favorite uh, version of Morticia w was or will be in the comments below. Uh, I do understand that we are going to get the Tim Burton 
Side rant. Very quickly, I'm not excited for the Tim Burton Autumn Stanley adaptation. Because it's supposed to have Wednesday and like this weird academy. She has psychic abilities, which I actually think is actually really cool. But because of the fact that, especially lately, yeah, Tim Burton is very odd and weird, and I've always wanted to see his version of the Addams Family because I thought, like, especially an animated version would be, oh my God, be really fucking cool. I'm not excited about it because, especially finding out that he had cheated, that I've rumored cheated on Helena Bonham Carter. Bonham Carter. And the fact that he said that people of color do not belong in his movies. Like, first of all, a half of your movies are fucking animated. Secondly, are you okay? He's just an ignorant prick. And at least he's been portrayed that way. Especially by the media. I've done what research I can find about him being a problematic person and it just it hurts because like I, I, I really like the Adam not the Adams family, sorry. Uh, I really like Tim Burton's works. I obviously his mainstream ones, the Batmans are really good in my opinion. Um and the the Nightmare for Christmas, Beetlejuice, The Corpse Bride, all that. I, I really do like it. But, Tim Burton is such a problematic person anymore. We do, however, side with Johnny Depp on this page and Free Britney. Should not have fucking freed Bill Cosby. He deserved his wrong fucking self for the rest of his life. Which he doesn't have that long left anyway. But even though the Addams Family, especially the later adaptations, have been shown to be extremely crazy and extremely more towards, like, the negative people, like Jack the Ripper, um, and people like that in media, in history, and everything like that, I really don't believe that even the Adamses would side with those kinds of people. And if you're wrong, then you can leave. The Adamses, especially the Adamses, are supposed to be weird. They're supposed to be different. So if you don't agree with that, that's on you. And you've misinterpreted it. Not on me. If you are a person of color, or somebody who just... Who doesn't look like me, who isn't a pale pasty bitch, and wants to dress up as one of the members of the Adams family, do it. Your character, whatever character you decide to dress up as, or be, or idolize, does not have to look like you. They have to match your morals. If they don't match your morals, then what's the point in liking them? Anyway, that is all I have for you guys today. Uh, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment, leave a dislike, and like I said, comment your favorite. Morticia and comment your favorite Adam Stanley. I want to know uh, because it might be the 98 one that I think it's with Tim Curry Who's the fabulous Dr. Frankenfurter? At least that's who I know him as <laughs> um, For the Rocky Horror Picture Show and let me know if there's any other ones that you want to you want to hear from me I do want to do another video on um, The monsters and then I want to do a video for uh, the Scooby-Doo series because I want to go through all the fucking ones that they have and there's a lot. And I'm probably going to dress up as Velma. So, let me know. I will see you guys in my other videos. And remember, never trust the living and stay weird. Bye.